Welcome to another episode of Long Distance Short, GiftBaskets'Overseas.com's podcast where we talk to real people about the triumphs and tribulations in all kinds of long distance relationships. Your host is Allie Winters, an international gift consultant who's found success in her own long distance romances and friendships. And here's today's topic, dealing with long distance in a relationship over the long term. Our guest is Frederick Sandval of MD Global Sales Consulting. Mr. Sandval is ex-military, has worked in over 40 countries and is still married to his wife of many years. I'm sure he has excellent tips for staying together even when you're far apart. Let's jump right in, Allie. Hi, everybody. I'm Allie, and just in a few minutes, we'll continue discovering long distance relationship, its advantages and disadvantages. I have been in a long distance relationship for four years now. Yes. But I know that there are people who are in an LDR for almost all their adult life due to work, business, or whatnot. So I'm glad to introduce our new guest, who is Frederick Sindival, constantly in a long-distance relationship with his wife and two kids. Hi, Frederick. How is it going? Yeah, all good, thanks. Sun is shining in Sweden today, but tomorrow I'll go to England. So can you... Just give us the idea of your background. Maybe you would like to share uh, some basic facts. Maybe uh, the reason for making you uh, start long distance relationships. Absolutely. Uh, to to start off, I, I'm a very unusual guest because I got so many careers inside my career. Mm-hmm. I been working uh, as uh, an entrepreneur when I was very young. Uh, I later moved into the military and uh, what they call special forces. Uh, I also been as part of that working with diplomatic uh, relationships between countries uh, and intelligence service. And from that, I moved into management consulting. Uh, and later years, I have been mainly working as an entrepreneur. And and while I've done all of those things, I've actually had one single relationship, which is quite unusual, I would say. Mm -hmm. Uh, So with with the military people, it's not the easiest uh, profession to have a relationship because you might be called on duty, Mm -hmm. uh, notice, uh, and you can also like sometimes disappear for a long time. We like special forces. Sometimes you have like a... A special phone where they can basically just call you and say, like, you need to be here, like, now. <laughs> uh, that means that even if you're, like, in a birthday party, you just have to leave and drop everything else to go. Uh, and that is, of course, putting a lot of tension potentially on a relationship. So, yeah, going go back to the very early years there. Uh, my wife has been with me for, for many years. And uh, that means that she is a strong one. I'm not. Uh, she <laughs> has to have all the patience with me because I'm, I'm sometimes changing my mind and uh, I'm moving around. And uh, yeah, it's just complicated to live with someone who's got too many ideas. <laughs> all right. And how did you meet your wife? Like, what is, was it a long distance relationship from the very beginning or you both had to accustom to it? Great question. Uh, We met actually while we were scouts. So I was just 17 at the time, which was a long while ago. Uh, So we met in a a competition with the scouts. And uh, from there, we lived uh, like one hour apart from each other. But since we were young, we didn't have any cars and things. So just to go from one person to the other with like public transportation could easily take many hours. So we could basically just meet up on like a weekend or in the summer so no we, we obstacles, met. right? Yeah, <laughs> there were yeah no exactly. Obstacles. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we that's kind of how we started, and from there, I did uh, military service, and uh, she has also been studying abroad in in France, and uh, I've been on various appointments uh, in many many parts of the, of the world. So I've been working in forty plus countries and traveling eighty. So you can imagine how often I'm on the road. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so with, with all of those things it was a wrong distance relationship from the beginning uh, we've been living together for many years but we've also been living apart as well for several years if you just put it all together and if to count like how many days out of the year you were apart or vice versa together just to give us um picture uh, yeah. of how it was 
Sure, just to give you a couple of examples. So when we got together, we pretty much met all, almost every single week and as often as we could, because again, super much in love, uh, early days. So we met as often as we could. Uh, another year, just to take an example, she was living and studying in France. I think it was in Paris 15 times in a year. And uh, another year, I I mean, if I take my worst examples, when I was away with the military, you usually away for like three months and you meet just less than two weeks and then you're gone for another three months again. And the longest time in doing that has been for more, more than one and a half years where we've been living this really strange life. So basically that's meeting up one and a half month in, in one and a half years, which is crazy. It's not a lot at all. Oh my God. So one, a year and a half and only one month, like you could see yeah, each other, it right? Might, might be a bit more, but yeah, it, at least, at least felt really, really short. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I can relate. Because I've been uh, in a long distance relationship with my Japanese friend, uh, boyfriend, basically. But we had another story. We started from the very beginning. So we didn't see each other until we met uh, like last September. So yep. we kind of got used to it and we just took it for granted. But in your case, I understand how it is when you know that you can be together here, but you're not. Yeah, exactly. And I would say now, uh, now I've chosen to have a very strange life. Most people are working like at least five days a week uh, and then they maybe get the weekend together. Uh, I have decided to work half of my time. So half of my time I am in England or somewhere else in the world working really hard so that I can be with a family almost half of the time not mm-hmm. working. Not working. So, so basically I get almost like a half year of holiday every year which I can spend with my family which is super cool. Uh, but that's because I work very hard during the other half of my life. <laughs> oh, yeah, you work hard yeah. and you get a reward. So yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and of course, it's, it's a sacrifice, but it's also a benefit. Uh, I can take a holiday pretty much any time I want in the year. I can have lots of flexibility. But that adds stress on the, on the family, of course. Mm-hmm. Especially, what were your daily rituals uh, to keep in touch with your family? Maybe something that you agreed upon and you couldn't... Uh, break your promise under any reason yeah so that's also been varying over the years from from the very early years we were writing letters and we were on the phone all the time mm-hmm. uh, it became uh, skype and skype video nowadays it's uh, a lot of whatsapp messages back and mm-hmm. forth not only between the two of us but also with the kids as well mm-hmm. we teenagers 13 and 15 two boys oh nice and, uh, in addition to that catching up not only with my wife but also with my two boys uh, very often with uh, uh, just FaceTime, the, the, the video function. Uh, so we speak most days, but not all days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also another thing is uh, you need to have quite a lot of, of tolerance to also allow people to do things their way. So if you think about like delegation or how you appoint tasks. So for example, we have certain things that I'm responsible for and other things that my wife is doing. And uh, and the rest we try to split up basically, especially when I'm around. Mm-hmm. It also means that my wife needs to be pretty much able to take care of herself and the kids and everything in a normal house. Almost like being single when I'm not around. Uh, and also sometimes uh, not being able to count on me to a hundred percent because sometimes my business interests are overruling the the nice things which might happen with the family. So that that's a bit sad but she doesn't really trust to a hundred percent that i will actually be there even if i said i would be which is not nice but it's just one way to explain it you just need to accommodate uh, because yeah yeah yeah, exactly life is life (laughs) indeed when you got kids it became easier to or maybe uh, harder to keep in touch because a lot of housework a lot of kids work (laughs) and uh, bringing up issues yeah uh also another great question uh, again I'm lucky because I am born in Sweden and here we've got a very good system for which also takes care of how you almost like run your run and raise your kids from early days so I've been able to have more than one and a half years of my life paid by the government to be home and take care of my own kids mm-hmm. which is very unique uh, uh, so I've been having great chance to be a lot with my family I'm a very I would like to see myself as a strong role model for my, my children, both in terms of uh, interests, entrepreneurship, and many other things. So they learn a lot. And also helping them with school stuff, which 
which we can even like remotely doing help with tutoring uh, over Skype or whatever. Mm -hmm. to help math, so on and so on. I'm, I'm very much involved in my family even when I'm away. Um, and sometimes you might be really carried away in terms of business, especially since you don't see the family, which means you be, might be like working 24 seven for a few days. And then you just like think, oops, yeah, I also got them over there. I probably should at least say hi so they know that I'm alive. Yeah. Um, so, but, and we need to help uh, kids with math. So yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't forget about it. Yeah. But I, I've had also a very, sad encounter once in my life uh, when I had my youngest son and uh, he was really young he was just nine months old mm -hmm. and I had been away for three months and he almost like looked afraid to see me because he didn't recognize my face in the first few seconds oh um, really that felt really really horrible uh, but then that has never ever happened again but that was just like a, almost like a wake-up call like I'm probably away a bit too much at this very critical stage of, of his life. Uh, but yeah, it, it was for very s strange circumstances that very time. Then maybe it, it uh, gave I, you a lesson. Well, yeah, yes. so to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it wasn't too long after that had happened well, and until I actually left the military completely. Uh, so that must have been 2006. Yeah, 2006. And then after that, I really considered a lot more wh where I was in terms of the military. And I just did a few more long distance trips and then I left completely. And also, mm -hmm. part of it, I had lots of bad things happened to people who were close to me in terms of like work. So many people were, uh, literally dying, uh, colleagues and so on. So I started to think like, actually, it's not only me anymore. So I need to be more grown up and, and start to think about the others in the family. And that's why I left the military. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that makes makes sense, of course. And your parents and your wife's parents, how did they react to the style of your life? What did they say? <laughs> Maybe they, they changed their opinion <laughs> with the time. Uh, great question. Uh, I think my, my parents uh, have always known that I'm, I'm, I'm a wild one. Uh, and my parents-in-law, they, they've pretty much seen me as, as a positive thing in, in, in their life, in my wife's life as well, even if I have been having this very unusual career with with un, yeah, not so normal choices that I've made, been making, for example, to work with intelligence service. So coming home to your wife and you can't even tell them what you've been doing, that's a very strange uh, setup. Uh, but yeah, no, they, they've been okay with it. And uh, they actually look really proud to get a, a book in, in their hand the other day, which says Trust in New Currency. And I, I wrote in the book uh, something along the lines of like, you didn't think that, did you? Uh, basically, like they had no idea, of course, to understand that this guy from the middle of the countryside in Sweden, uh, in a very rural area, uh, would actually end up having multiple businesses uh, to write a book, uh, to be traveling all over the world and talk about things and helping others. They would, did not believe that when we got together, I think. Well, we yeah. were very young spouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they need to read the book uh, a few times yeah. and yeah, reconsider <laughs> and look at you with different, uh, like, uh, with new eyes through the new yeah, lens. Yeah, I think they would. I think they would. Yeah. And that's great because, uh, this way you show how, uh, well, one person can change a lot and only using determination, stamina, uh, the desire to, to work, to make life better, to help people, to make them happy. Uh, so, of course, if you're interested in, uh, such, um, such an interesting topic as investment in and resources, um, yeah. you're welcome to visit, uh, Frederick's podcast, Invest in You. Um, Perfect. And if you think about investment literally, <laughs> you should yep. um, definitely check Invest in Skills podcast. Mm, it's more about money, but we all know that time is money and time is life and everything is linked. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and thanks for just mentioning that uh, the, the podcast. And also relationships is, and, and money is another very complicated thing um, because many people don't talk about money. So even inside a relationship, money as a topic, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm mentoring and teaching and helping many people in, in this matter uh, all over the world. 
And people usually don't talk about money, not even in a relationship, almost like having secrets for each other. So, so the family finance might be really bad. Uh, and, and because of the pride, the other person doesn't dare to mention it. Or it might be that someone has their own account because they know the spouse will just waste all the money. Uh, and you might have other uh, matters as well in the relationship, which is very much linked to money as well, like, for example, very expensive drugs. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I'm very lucky. I don't have any of those problems. Uh, but it is something I, I see popping up here and there when I am do coaching as well. Yeah, and I also know the situations when uh, usually men uh, don't trust uh, women, maybe sometimes vice versa, if the other person earns more because they think that at early stages they don't share this information uh, in yeah. order to make sure the person you are planning to, to live with is not a scammer, that they don't want to make any scam scamming things to you of yes. course it's it's a good thing to be always aware of uh, of and don't trust everybody literally but i think there should be a line and what is your personal opinion on that do we need do couples need to share uh maybe split uh, all the money they earn or they just need to keep in uh, keep each other aware of what is going on I think a uh, quite high degree of transparency is very important. Then how people decide to, to split and share things that very much depends on their situation. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, if when you do get married, you have got the option to have like a, a prenup, which basically means like whatever you brought in or this specific thing you might brought into a relationship uh, is not part of, of the future if, if we have a divorce. So I think that's very much case by case. Uh, but then also you can uh, argue that I would never be able to have kids and do what I do unless my wife was supporting me. Mm -hmm. So as long as I want to have like a family, I couldn't do what I'm doing unless she was supporting me. It wouldn't work. Uh, whereas uh, that you can discuss like what is the value. Of course, my salary is, is way higher for different reasons than, than my partners. At the same time, we pretty much split everything. That works for our relationship. And, and on the other hand, uh, as soon as I have like too much money, I just invest it, which my wife doesn't think is super fun because while we have a lot of assets, uh, we don't have like huge amounts of cash floating around because as soon as I got like too much, then <laughs> I buy another income generating asset. Uh, so yeah, um, my wife might want to have more money, but that's, <laughs> that's a different story. <laughs> Yeah, totally. I'm building very much for the for the long haul. Uh, think almost like mini empire building. So building something which will not only last for us, but it will be for many generations to come. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, and also some Japanese proverbs that say they believe that a human can be really happy only if they have harmony in, for example, family. It's work. Yep. And self development. So yes. that's why I'm, why I mentioned this because it should be kind of, we were talking about investment and we should invest in relationships too. And, uh, since um, trust is a main uh, part of it. Yeah. I totally agree with you that it, it should yep. be like this. Good, good. Uh, and well, talking about your philosophy of life, <laughs> so to say, uh, what advice would you give for people, uh, in the same situation as you? Like some survival, long distance relationship life hacks or something you like that you would like people to, 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 to know about? Yeah. I think one of the most important things is just SMS communication. As long as there's like two way communication between two people, that means that they can actually pick up when the other person isn't happy. Uh, and uh, you can also try to adjust, therefore, if you if you like to maintain in that relationship. So really have communication, but not just one way, but two way. So me, and also be very uh, observant to the non-verbal clues which might be there. So someone might say something, might not say the same with the whole body. Um, so she might say like, yeah, yeah, uh, dear, you can of course go out with the guys, but you can see that the, maybe the whole body language is saying, say something different. So yeah, <laughs> communication essentially be, uh, pay attention to those small details in the whole body language, how we communicate. Etc. So that's one thing. Another thing is really understand that men and women are really, really different. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> I might point out something really uh, obvious, but many men might not have seen this yet. 
that uh, while a woman might just talk about the day or something which might be to a man perceived as a problem, it's just like she might want just to talk about it to, to, to open up her heart. She might not look for uh, someone to jump in there and fix the problems and come up with solutions. You just want maybe to be heard. That's another one. Again, it's about communication. If you feel exactly. uh, that there are some, fr- there is there is some friction between, you just tell about it. Uh, yeah, you don't need yeah. to make uh, a big row. You don't need to quarrel about it. Like, but just try to do it, yeah. to say it yeah. in a polite way. Yeah. yeah, this is extra hard when when you see yourself like as a professional problem solver, which I very much do. <laughs> uh, leaving that one. What else? Uh, be aware that there are many ways how people like to be acknowledged in life. So some people love to, to get, I know that you're working with gifts. Uh, so some people love to have gifts. Uh, other pub, people like to receive and or to give gifts. Those are different things. But my wife, for example, she loves to give gifts. That often gives me a clue what kind of things she would appreciate. So that's a book about uh, different love languages. We can highly recommend on this. So it might be that someone else would like to hear Thank you. As simple as like acknowledgement. Might be that they would like to get help. Uh, and, and I will already yeah. mention that with, with, with gifts. Uh, some people like to be, uh, touched and, and others not. So all of those things pick up the clues what the old partner really likes and enjoys. There are often many clues how, how you can do that. Yeah. Uh, Another tip is I picked up from uh, another book. I read a lot, pretty much a book every week. Uh, it's uh, if for whatever reason you're frustrated about something in your relationship, try to find one thing that you really like what your partner did and write that down. Uh, so at least she made the bed or um, at least he... Uh, walked out with uh, the rubbish or whatever, but yes, you have to find something positive. Yeah. To write about. Just by changing that in your mind, you will now start to observe that there's quite a lot of good positive things happening in the relationship while you maybe have used to look for all the bad things. Th- th- those were more than a handful of tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, basically it works for me and uh, yeah. I didn't read it in the book. I just find, found found it out when we had big argument, and I just had to just think. Well, I need time first of all. Everybody needs time, I think, to understand who's what's right, what's wrong, who is right, who's wrong. Of course, usually two are wrong in some uh, to some degree, but uh, I think that we should always say like, "Do I want to?" go on with this person do i want to move on in the relationship if the answer is yes then i need to swallow my anger i need to swallow my pride and look at the situation rationally otherwise we will not go any further and of course it doesn't mean that we need to go and say like yeah it was my fault Uh, forgive me (laughs) no that's i think that's not about it maybe really time is needed but We, I think we certainly need to think about what we personally can do and that that person is not the, the worst person in the world. <laughs> yeah, nice, yeah. Even if it seems like that. So Yes, exactly. I, I totally moment. agree. Yeah. Okay. okay. And now, a few words for our sponsors. The international gift delivery company GiveBaskets-Overseas.com Sometimes, a gift makes all the difference. Take the time to tell Grandma to get well soon. Surprise the love of your life with a timeless keepsake. Thank your office friends for their hard work. No matter where they are in the world, you can spoil them from one place. Giftbasketsoverseas.com We make international gift delivery easy for you. One more interesting question. If you could speak to yourself in the beginning of your way, yeah, of your past to long distance relationship and long distance experiences, uh, in any kind, what would you say to yourself? Which would, what would help you? Yeah. Uh, what, one really funny thing from when I met, met my wife, uh, is the, the day after we, we have, uh, got together, she asked, are you really serious about this? Because I really don't have time with you. Because she was really <laughs> focused on schoolwork. Uh, <laughs> and obviously, w- what would you say uh, if someone asked you? Of course, you can say, no, 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 I'm just fooling around. Or 
or if you say, uh, yes, I'm very serious uh, about this. Um, I did the second of those two options and, and we are still together now after 25 years plus. So yeah, something uh, that morning that I said, yes, I'm serious. I still have to live by that, obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, jo- jokes aside, um, wrong, long distance relationships can be tricky. Um, just set out some like good, agree, agreeable things which you, you both like to adhere to really. We never set out to have like a long distance relationship. It very much have become like that because of my strange work. Uh, but honestly, one reason why we probably are together still today after many years is that we also have that space in our relationship that we don't live on top of each other the whole time. I think that actually is a strength for us. So yeah, we might be living together for a long time together uh, and then we are apart a bit and then together. It means it gets more interesting, exciting when you're not together all the time. That's yeah. my view. Other people like my, my, both of my younger brothers, they don't want to spend one day without their spouse if they can choose. That's another view. And nothing is right or wrong. It's just what works for both of the people in the relationship. Yeah, I totally understand. And I also heard the idea that women need to give two things to to men. The first is support in any situation, and the second is freedom. <laughs> so, yeah. but I think women need it as well. I yeah. I would say that any woman, well, we like attention, but there should be some <laughs> borderline <laughs> at some point. So yeah. I think it works for both. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely spot on there. Okay. And Frederick, so uh, what kind of things do you work on at the moment? What are your plans? Um, what are your incentives? Yeah. So I uh, have got a couple of businesses. Uh, they are mainly in real estate and uh, I have property around uh, England. And I also got a couple of companies which work with finance. So they're very much helping companies to find money for, for growth uh, and also consulting in the same space, also helping other companies to grow. So I have been having like huge companies like Google to help them to grow. Are you probably familiar with Google? No. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> uh, <do. laughs> And then also very small companies where it might be like one, two people uh, or, or like your business, for example, like growing your, your gift business um, and everything in between. So yeah, I like to help people to grow and I do that in different ways. So for example, I do a little free stuff with uh, well, like podcast and I got some uh, very affordable things, which is like uh, the book, for example, which we have, Trust is New Currency. And then we've got another book, which will be uh, ready in the next few months, which is called How to Make Money as a Teenager, which is very, more like younger people. And and it's really, uh, you know, relevant, a relevant topic now. Everybody, yeah, yeah. and I think it should be implemented in school. It's t- it, it needs to be implemented from the early age. Even completely agree. So yeah, you 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 would laugh laugh out loud when you see the video for our Kickstart campaign, which is coming up very soon. Because basically, it's my youngest son saying like, school does not prepare you to make money, which yeah. is a very bold <laughs> statement and semi almost like aggressive. Because schools, uh, like if you think about the first school, that only makes you ready to go into the second school which makes you ready to go into your third school, which might not prepare you for your actual job, which is a bit crazy. And I also heard people say, what are you going to do after you finish your university? Uh, I'll go to the, yeah, I'll go and get another degree. And what's after that? Mm, Well, I'm familiar with how to do this. So I'll go for another degree. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I might become a doctorate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And after that, like, "Mm, (laughs) what shall I do next? Yeah, so I, I try to help people in different ways and so on and so forth. So yeah, people are more than welcome to, to check out the links in, in, in the show notes, I hope. Um, so at the moment, what's really on top of my head, Charlie is my youngest son. He is like, Dad, we need to work on the book. And that book is uh, the one which is called How to Make Money as a Teenager. He's really, really interested in that. And, and we will start to sell that on uh, Kickstarter on the 15th, 16th of September. So that will be really fun. Mm-hmm. See nice who in the world find this interesting, uh, because literally anyone can just buy buy the book there or 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 a training. And uh, many parents don't have the relationship with their kids, so they can actually teach and talk to them, which is very sad and ironic, uh, because they, they might have done stupid things, uh, so there there might be not the best relationship between them. So yeah, I hope to be the the backup 
parent in some some kid's life so help them to do the stuff that I did really early on which is really unusual to, mm-hmm. to learn how to make money when I was very young uh, and that has helped me ever since and if there is some kid who would like to find you as a par- as a parent as a Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as a dad, what is the best way to find you and to contact you in this case? I've got a very unusual name. There's yet extremely few Frederick Sandwell in the world. If you Google that name, I will pretty much be on the first few pages. So you can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, I also do quite a lot of video things with Charlie, my youngest one. If you go to YouTube and search for Sandwell, our surname, uh, you will find Charlie's podcast where we also share lots of stuff. Um, yeah. Great, so, pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, it's quite quite easy. Good to have an unusual name. It's very good. Yeah, can't agree more. Okay, that was a nice talk. Thank you so much for sharing your great experience and, uh, of course, sharing the expertise as well as uh, sharing some new links and new ways we can invest <laughs> in our long-distance relationships. And not only, it was a real pleasure to talk to you and I hope it's not our last episode for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I can just uh, say that I'm really not an expert. I'm still learning. Women are extremely complicated creatures, so I'm just getting started. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I understand what you're talking okay. about. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> While you're here, we want to tell you about another of our guests' exciting ventures. Check out h2m.money and learn how to invest in yourself and your children by backing How to Make Money as a Teenager on Kickstarter from Frederick Sandval and his son, Charlie. Parents and teens alike will benefit from Mr. Sandval's entrepreneurial experience and unique ongoing project to teach parents and children how to build, scale, and grow their own business together. Again, visit h2m.money today. Thanks for listening to Long Distance Short, giftbasketsoverseas.com's podcast with real people in real long-distance relationships. Make sure to subscribe and keep tuning in for a new episode every month. If you have any questions or ideas for a future podcast, make sure to drop us a line at podcast at giftbasketsoverseas.com. That's podcast at giftbasketsoverseas.com.